Okay, hey, um, so I was on YouTube and I was getting kind of annoyed because of how many uh, tutorials I see that claim that you can learn programming in like five minutes or an hour or whatever it is. Um, yeah, so like here, just to show you what I'm talking about. Pretty much insert any language and type this in. And then we get a learn Python in one hour, which I started like, it's funny. I'll just check videos out just cause I, I like to see like what people are attempting to teach other people. <laughs> um, where's one? I know there's like a five minute one here as well. Uh, let's see. Yeah. I don't know, we saw it earlier. It said like five minutes, and I was like, well, that's not possible. Um, either way, um, I decided I'm going to go ahead, and this tutorial isn't going to be on a specific language, but it's going to be more on the idea of programming. And this was something I always had an issue with when I was uh, beginning to program, was like, after you learn the syntax of a language, it's like, how do you actually use that language to do things right and I don't think this is taught enough especially on YouTube and things like that so um, this is going to kind of step through programming as a whole and we're actually going to look at like a few different languages while we're doing it right and from there I'm going to break it down into how most programming languages are actually very similar yeah, you know the syntax might be a little different but programming languages in general all have very um, specific things that they do uh, they just might call them differently different things so this is like the meta programming guide and a tutorial that will hopefully enable you to learn any language in I'd say you, you probably an hour two hours you could learn the syntax of another language and apply what you know what we're going to learn to those languages and we'll then give you more of a like an actual understanding of what you're doing and you're not just following um you know print hello world on the screen or whatever it is um i i know more programming languages probably than most people uh would ever even want to know um, mostly just because I'm I, I don't know I enjoy learning things so here we go um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off I'm gonna build I'm gonna build a small outline of what it is we're gonna go over um, and kind of build out all of the things that programming languages all have in in general um, so here we go we'll just go ahead and say uh, we'll call this um, outline for now I would do it in markdown but whatever okay so right uh, specific things in programming is uh, every programming language has a way to do data right and it's funny because you know you always hear you know computers just do ones and zeros ones and zeros blah 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 um, data is the human representation of um, what the computer right it, it gives us like this commonality it's like Everything is stored in ones and zeros, but there needs to be a human readable way of doing it. So in programming languages, right, we store our data in different variables, as they would call them, right? And there's different types of variables, and you'll, we'll, we'll get into all that. But in essence, it's data. The first thing, right, that every programming language will have is a way to um, store data. The second will be a way to modify that data, right? And these can normally come in functions, uh, methods, depending on what, if you're using an object-oriented programming language or whatever it, it is to be. Um, and then a way to structure, actually, we should probably do that this way, right? Um, three, and then two is actually structure data, right? Okay. And it's funny, right? But these are the three main things that every programming language, it doesn't matter which one you're gonna do, it it will accomplish these goals, right? And it does these, like I said, with different ways. Um, for data, right, you have different types of variables. Um, 
and inside variables, you know, there's constant variables, there's immutable, there's uh, which I guess are immutable, and then you have mutable variables, which you can change things like that. Um, don't worry, we're gonna we're gonna go into all of this, right? It's just, this is just a quick overview, and then you have structure, um, structured data, which essentially is gonna take all those variables and everything, and it's gonna come, it's gonna combine them into a um, either like if you're using object oriented programming language, it's going to put them all into, you can put it all into an object, right? And then it just gives you an easier way to um, build those individual data pieces into something that is useful to you, right? So this might be, this could be anything from classes, or if you're using C and stuff, then it would be most of your data will be stored in structures, um, right? And then you need a way to modify your data, right? And this is done normally with, <laughs> we won't get into, I watch it, there's gonna be people that will be like, oh, you said function method, blah, 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 right? Okay, so functions, right, um, essentially taken after the mathematic term, which is, you know, you put something in and uh, essentially it gives you an output. Uh, Methods, on the other hand, are normally related to if you're using classes and things like that. They're, they're normally called methods if they're attached to an object. But in most languages nowadays, you can kind of just interchange the word. Like I said, watch a few people will freak out. But um, it, it's I've seen even I don't know. I'd say a lot of languages treat functions like methods, and methods also are treated like functions. It's really weird. Um, either way. Uh, we won't get into that. So, right, it, it's funny, but this is the most basic part of programming here. And it, it's something as simple as you have data, right? And the only thing that makes a program useful is being able to store um, the, the components that make up the program, right? So what we're going to do is, and this is something else that's never really taught from what I've seen. Um, like I said, I always had issues with this, is destructuring um, something that you would see in uh, in the world and like a physical object, right? And that you're gonna make into a computer. So one of the good exercises to do when you're trying to learn programming, at least I, I think is probably by far one of the best exercises is to take something physical in the world that's sitting around you, whatever it is, or something that you enjoy, but you need to know it, right? And you can't, it's very hard to do this with something that like you don't know how it works or anything like that. But essentially you take something that you really know, and then you create that in a program, right? So um, let's see, what's something everybody really knows, right? Like I, There's common examples with cars, stuff like that. But a car is fairly simple, but it's also fairly complex when you start breaking it down into individual components, right? You have an engine, you have all this, and you have to go into that. Um, so we're gonna start out like super simple right now, right? And essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a, I have a cup sitting here, right? So let's create a cup, right? So first thing you have to do is you have to figure out this program, right, that is going to be a cup, uh, what is it going to store, right, um, things like that. So you break down all these properties, and these properties can be assigned to data and variables, right, because variables are just certain types of data. Like I said, this this, this is the meta idea of programming. It's not um, a specific tutorial on it, but we will be writing some Python code. We will, I'll go through and I'll look at, I'll I'll we'll pull up um, docs. It might be a multi-stage tutorial, kind of depending on how long it takes. Um, but we'll go through the language documentation. I'll teach you how to actually read documentation, um, right? Because it, programming, you're going to be pretty useless if you don't know how to read documentation. And documentation is by far uh, one of the hardest things uh, to get your mind around. Um, Right. So either way, again, the standard libraries of most programming languages are huge. So you'll be spending a lot of time in, in documentation. Um, OK, so either way, we're going to break down a cup. Right. So a cup is um, let's uh, let's just assign it random things. Right. And we're going to go ahead and we'll use Python syntax for this. Um, I, like I said, I program in a bunch of different languages, so it's possible that um, this won't be perfect right now. But this is just kind of the like I said, the meta code, the outline of it. Right. So the color, and this is 
individual and then we're going to take all of these things that we're going to make and we're going to put them inside of a class right and then we'll show you how to use it so let's say we have a color right and this is going to be equal to white um or you know what my cup is like red and white but we'll do red um color size um let's just call it medium right and then we will do full like is it full right um and we can set that to false which is it's it's not full right um and then we can with this right uh let's do let's call it capacity right so capacity capacity sorry um equals we'll just say zero for now right and we'll go from zero to 100 is what we, is how we'll do, we'll design that right but essentially right this is a cup um so so you take this physical object right and you're breaking it down into manageable properties um or pieces of data that can represent this cup and that's all program that's all computers are right is a, a way to represent data in a way that um, a human is you can use it um so we have these cups, right? These would be our variables, as you would call it. Um, and in Python, I'm fairly certain that is valid Python code, but what we will do is go ahead and create a Python file to do this. Um, Cup.py, right? So like I said, um, I'm just gonna copy and paste this over here. And then We'll go ahead and print okay save that python3 um, cup.py oh um, python uses uh, capitalized booleans so Okay, right, so red, medium, false, zero. And if we wanted to, we could uh, throw this into like a format string. And we can say um, the cup properties are. Like I said, don't worry about like right now we're getting the idea behind it. Um, I will actually be doing a full tutorial on Python this is much more important to learn right now than, uh, than like this, you know, I, I could tell you, oh, I'm typing this, I'm doing this right, but if you're not understanding why I'm doing it, it's useless to you. <laughs> so here we go, right? Um, so now, right, when I print this out, right, the cut properties are red, medium, false, zero. Um, right, so the, they don't, this doesn't mean a lot to me right now, right? Because, it, I mean, it, it's cool and everything, but if I want to, you know, uh, change the capacity, well, then I have to come in here and I have to, you know, I have to ensure that I'm taking all of these individual pieces of data, right? This color, the size is full, and everywhere I go, I have to copy it around. So that is where objects and structures come in. Um, in, in, uh, in Python, you're going to use um, classes mostly, right? Which is an object. It's an object oriented programming language in uh, C you would use like a structure, which we I'll actually end up going through that as well uh, later on. Um, but either way, let's go ahead and let's now make a cup class, right? And like I said, you're not, it's fine. If you're not understanding what I'm typing, it's more of you understand the idea that there's an object and all it is doing is containing data right so we this is all about learning how it's structured that's the biggest issue that i see with most people and and why like they might learn syntax of a language and then they have no idea what to do with that um, so let's go ahead and do a class uh, we'll call it cup um, and then definite Self. Um, uh, it's fine. We won't pass it in. We'll just hard code these in right now because I'm. If I pass them in and everything, I'm going to introduce other stuff that it doesn't really matter, right? Um, but essentially, what we're going to do, right, is just 
right, is just this. So now, right, we still have that same data. We still have those individual properties, but now it's going to be more useful to do because, and I will show you, um, we're going to say um, new cup equals cup, right? And then from here, um, we can go ahead and say, Okay, great. So technically, we should run this and we should get the exact same cup has no attribute color. Oh, sorry, I am slow, apparently. Um, Got to do the selves because we are inside a class. Like I said, my, for my day job, I am programming right now in, I think I'm using D, D lang, which is like, <laughs> yeah, it is, so. You'll have to bear with me, like I said, if I do some things wrong, but there we go, right? Back to the cut properties are red, medium, false, and zero. So we have the exact same output, right? The difference is now, if I need to do something with this, this cup, right? If I need to pass it to, um, this gets into the third thing, right? If I need to modify this data in any way, I can pass this entire new cup as a parameter to a function or a method, depending on how you want to call them, um, that will modify these properties, right? That will modify the data, right? So let's say that, and this is going to um, go into how the functions are done in, um, in Python, but we'll say, um, yeah, def. Uh, is it def? Now I'm super confused. Yeah, sorry. Like I said, it's been. <laughs> this is all from memory. Um, either way, we're going to pass in a cup, and then from here, we are going to say cup dot cup dot capacity equals one hundred cup dot full equals true, right? So now we're going to go ahead and print this one here. Um, we're going to copy that line down and then we are going to fill cup, cup, right? Or fill cup, new cup, sorry. There we go, right? So now we're going to run this again. And you can see now, right, that the properties are red, medium, false, right? This, this is not uh, full right now. And zero is the capacity. We now took that cup. We took it. We took this data. We sent it to a function. And the function modified that data, right? And now that cup is red, medium. It is true that it is full. And it is a, at 100% capacity. So... Right. Um, this is all programming is right, and it's funny because every programming tutorial I watch or I see and I and I look through, they rarely talk about like what it is you are doing, um, and it's like I said, it's just it's it's really weird because it gets to me because <laughs> it's like I want people to learn, um, and I feel like you're not truly learning unless you actually understand this um, and and how this is going on, right? So. All in all, right, if you look at it, from what we just did, we talked about data, right? And that was the first thing that we did. We talked about structure data, and we called that class, right? And then we modified that data, and we did that with a function. Um, so I'm, this is just for the technicalities of things. Um, inside, uh, if a function, right, see this fill cup right here is placed outside and it takes in that data, it does some stuff, and then it will um, release that data, it, it will update that data. Um, that's a function, right? This is a function. If I was to actually come in and do a, I could legit actually just copy this pretty much and paste it in. Um, Right, and the only thing I need to do here is change this from cup to self. Um, 
self.capacity and self.full, right? So now this is a method. This is method fill cup because it is attached to an object and it is going to be ran on the object's properties. Um, this here is a function fill cup. Um, and it, it, legitimately, that's the only difference. And it actually can do very similar things in Python. Um, in other programming languages, you would have issues with this, right? Especially because there's um, static or there's public and there's private variables types, right? Like you can say, hey, nobody outside of this, right? Like I essentially you could be like, this is a private variable um, full, right? And nobody outside, if I send this to a function, will be able to change this from false to true. The only thing that can change this from false to true is myself, right? And then you could make this a public function that gets called and it updates that for you. Or a public method, my bad, sorry, I mixed it up again. Um, either way, so now, right, if I wanted to do this, this, see how I call fill cup, new cup, and I pass it to that? Um, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do new cup dot fill cup, right? And if I do this and I run it, I'm gonna get the same results, right? It's the same thing. And you're like, oh, well, how do you know, Sam, that that's not happening? Well, let's go ahead and comment that out. Um, so we'll comment that out and we'll run this again just to show you. And you can see, right, it's in fact the exact same result and output. And the difference is, like I said, this is considered a method um, and this would be considered a function. So either way, that right there is the basics of all programming languages. Um, there are, you know, other things that they get into um, what it is you're doing and, and, you know, specific ways that the language might do things. But essentially every language does this. Um, so that was a very easy task, right? Like this cup with variables and all of that. But you say, okay, Sam, why does this, help me, right? Like, why did I structure this data? And this is why programming languages are powerful on how they can structure their data. Like, that's how actually how I rate a programming language is how powerful can, does it get when, for me to be able to um, modify this data? And this will go into, you've probably heard of object-oriented programming languages, functional programming languages, um, protocol-oriented program, pro programming languages, which is, I think Swift is considered a protocol-oriented um, Go would actually be considered, I think, protocol oriented technically too, um, either way. Um, so new cup, right? Instead of having to redo all of those thing, all of these variables every time, right? I can legitimately just say new cup two equals cup, right? And if I do Go ahead and do this as well, and we'll say new cup. Oh, sorry. Let me do new cup. I'm gonna run this through the function, um, not the method, just to kind of show you the best of both worlds. New cup to fill cup. Okay, right, so second cup's filled. Okay, so now we go into, right now we have these hard coded, right? And eh, that's not very useful, right? But let's say that we, all the cups we're gonna make, they're all gonna be red, they're all gonna be medium size, right? But let's say that we can give it an initial capacity, right? Um, so what we'll do is we will call capacity or we will say we'll pass in a capacity and um, we can actually this is if we do this first um, we're going to move that line up and we're going to say equals capacity and then we can actually check here right and we can say if right and, and this this is the next part of programming language that gets added in right is there's ways to modify data. Well, guess what? Um, there's also ways to, um, I don't wanna say describe. I wanna say to essentially, um, not segment, but um, sort, 
Yeah, yeah, let's go with sort, right? And people are going to get on me for this, for saying sort, I think. But it, essentially, an if statement and stuff like that is a way to, you know what? Let's go qualify. Qualify data is a way to qualify the data, right? Is to say, hey, do you, does this does this meet this, right? And you normally do these with um, comparisons. And from those comparisons, you get... Uh, true or false values back, Boolean values back. But in, in other words, um, some in Python, there's only if, isn't it? If, l if, else, I think is Python's. Um, let me make sure I am correct on this. If, yeah, lf. Okay, yeah, so it is lf. Okay, um, like I said, sorry. A lot of programming languages um, floating around up here. Um, but in, in essence, this is how you normally um, qualify data inside Python. Uh, other programming languages will do what I enjoy much more, which is like a switch statement, right? So you can essentially be like, give uh, different cases. So like, you can like, hey, I take this property, right? So switch, I want to on this property uh, capacity or whatever, um, I want to if it's at zero, you know, self.full is false. If it's at 100, then self.full is true. Um, and you could do that with like a switch statement if you wanted to. You Like the syntax would be something, this, this isn't valid Python code right here. I'm just showing you what it would, but you essentially do like switch um, self.capacity. <laughs> if Python was to do this, this is how it would be, right? And then you'd be like case zero and then self dot full equals false um, case 100 self dot full equals true right uh, if if Python had a switch statement I would imagine it would be something similar to this um, it doesn't though so you write you end up writing a lot of if statements which is kind of my pet peeve uh, with with Python in general but if self.capacity is equal to 100. Oh, you don't need that in Python, sorry. So once again, some programming languages, you are required to have brackets around your um, if statements or braces or no, parentheses, sorry, is going to be true. And then else um, self.full is going to equal false. So these are called initializers, right? This is called an initializer method. When I am creating an object, um, and, and this, once again, this goes to any language. It's not specific to Python. I'm just using Python because it's the easiest for most people to read um, off the beginning. Um, but in essence, right, when you create a cup, this is saying, hey, create me a new cup right? And what essentially it's doing is before I didn't have this capacity here, right? Um, so this was valid. Now, if I try to do this, it should actually fail um, and tell me that I didn't initialize it. Yeah, see, missing one required positional argument capacity. So in essence, I need to pass in a capacity. Python has a nice way of doing um, things like this. Not every language does, but they're called default parameters, right? So I could say that um, the default capacity is zero, right? So now this is valid. Now I can run this and all my code runs. And essentially what it's gonna do is every time I create a cup, it's going to say that it's zero. Um, so what we're gonna do next is we are going to actually pass in a 50 into 50. And just to show you, that this works. Um, this first line here when we run again should say 50. The other ones will still say 100 if I'm, yeah, right? So this first one's gonna say 50. Um, so next, what we're gonna do is we want to essentially check um, our code, right? Like this. So this, this goes into, once again, you're, you're trying to describe a real life object and you need to account for certain things, right? Because let's say that I come up here and I try to fill my cup that's already at capacity, right? Let's say that I already have 100% capacity and I run fill cup on it. 
um, bad programming, I would say, well, I'll just fill it anyways, and I'll set it to 100 anyways, right? Which, in this case, isn't going to cause many issues. But in other pro, like if you're in a very complex application, things like that, that can cause issues, right? Resetting certain things. So what we can do, right, is we can say if um, self dot capacity is not equal to 100, right? Then we can set it to 100, and we can set self dot full equal to true. Actually, I think we can keep this over here because I think we're always going to do that if we do. If not, we'll return early. Um, else, we will just say print cup is already full, right? Um, and we will return um, yeah that should be good so now um, I'm gonna go ahead and run this and we shouldn't get anything different right yeah but where we would get something different is if I run this new cup fill cup again down here now we should get a print line that says hey the cups already full right and that's all you're doing right is you're taking something super simple and you're building in small pieces of functionality to it and that's essentially what all of programming is it's nothing special it's nothing like super crazy it's funny because you know people get it i always compare computers to magic tricks right and it's because i enjoy magic tricks as a kid i always wanted to be a magician um didn't end up being a magician but so you know, they're like magic tricks, right? Super cool from the outside. Super cool the first time you see it. Once you learn how it's done, you're like, oh crap, that's stupid, right? Like, <laughs> that's essentially, that's computers for you. Um, is once you actually start understanding computers and what it is they're doing, you're just like, oh, well, that's really simple. That's not, that's nothing special. And like this right here, you might not see is a, as a like, okay, you made a cup. Oh, okay, you can fill it, right? But this is what every programming language is made to do, is to take some representation of your data, structure it, modify it, and qualify it. And that That's all. Like, it, it's legitimately that simple. Um, and then I'm going to probably get to the end of this tutorial because this was like the, the hard points I wanted to hit out that I don't see tutorials ever teaching this stuff and this is the stuff that actually matters right i can teach you the syntax of a language anytime but if you don't understand what this syntax is made to do then you're you're not going to be ever ever be able to use it properly right like i mean okay you're going to print hello world you're going to do that right so if you're learning programming and like i was and it's funny like i was like i always thought to myself when do you actually become a programmer, right? Like, I learned syntax for this. I learned this. But when do you actually become a programmer? You actually become a programmer when you can do this. When you can take something physical, something that you really know to start off with. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing it with something you don't know because that will lead to unforeseen um, <laughs> consequences in, in your code probably. But take something you know, build it out, and, and use that to learn your language. Right. And that's actually what I do. I, my, my specific, I have a specific template of program that I do for every programming language I ever pick up. And that is a family tree, right? I write my family tree. Um, and essentially that's because I know my family, I know my kids, I know my wife, I know like all of this stuff and I can build these functionality. And so what I, what, like my, my normal, uh, program will look like, you know, I create a person from that person, I might um, create a child which inherits from person, an adult which inherits from person, um, and then I might, you know, put in there, uh, get married or whatever that two adults can get married once they get married, you know, and then if um, if they have a child, a new child that comes along that creates a child. How do you, so like I'll create these. I'll like that's essentially my go-to. Like hey, I'm gonna learn a new programming language. I'm gonna build this program first. 
and that's something I highly recommend, and I don't see that done enough either in programming, is um, go ahead and find something you're really good at, and it anything like legitimately anything like i one of the guys i work with i was having this it's funny the reason i'm making this video is because he was telling me some of the issues he was having as well and he's trying to learn programming and it's like um he was i was like what do you like doing right and he's like well i play the piano and it's like like well that one is that one's kind of hard to come up with but i started giving him some ideas right um and that is like uh, your your data right your data in in a piano just off the just off the back right like this is just me spitballing I'm not super uh, good uh, I have played the piano before but not a lot and that was when I was really young um, but right like a piano how would I break down a piano just right off the back and I started trying to give him ideas on this right well we know that a piano consists of keys right um, so you would create like a key right. Um, and that's the thing is here, you wouldn't want to create all your keys. You would want to create a single key and then you would want to structure that inside of like, this is where you get into nested data structures, things like that. And that's what actually you start building, like you start something very simple, like a single key in a piano, right? Take a simple key, you add it to an, oh, sorry, I did that wrong. Uh, you add it to an array of keys, right? And those array of keys get attached to a piano. And, you know, um, these keys, right, might have a function that says play, right? So a key or press right, would be essentially, I guess, the more appropriate term, right? So a key, you can, you can press a key. Um, you can hold a key, right? And you can start describing all of these things um, to us, in essence, that's how you would make like a virtual piano, right? Um, and, and it's funny because all of these things, you can take anything it is that you're good at, and as long as you know it right, as long as you know it well, um, you should use that to learn a programming language. That's why, like, it's very hard. Like, if you're not if you're not engaged in it and you don't want to like you should enjoy what you're doing. I, I'm, I'm a big proponent and, you know, I might do a separate video on that as well is, um, you, you should do what you enjoy doing. If you don't enjoy what you're doing, then you're wasting your life doing it. And it's really not worth much. Um, but either way, I, let me know if you guys like this video. I know it's a little, uh, I'm just kind of spitballing cause I don't like, I, I, it's like three o'clock in the morning. I woke up and this was on my mind and annoying me. So <laughs> I was like, oh, I'll just make a video on it. But um, let me know if this helps you guys. If this does help you guys, um, let me know if you're interested in specific programming language tutorials. Give me any language and I'll do it. Please don't give me any like lips, Lisp or scheme based language because uh, I don't really enjoy those. But um, I'd still, I guess, do it if you guys really wanted it. Um, <laughs> Either way, uh, give me a pro give me programming languages that you're that you're interested in seeing. Um, I'll give you some of a uh, list of my favorite programming languages. I, I plan on doing one for V for the V language. Um, v language is a pretty cool programming language. It's new. Uh, it's quite small. Um, it's got a lot of uh, controversy behind it. Uh, but yeah, like let me know what you guys think. If this helped you, right? If this helped you, that's mostly what I care about. I, I just like to help people. So yeah. Um, let me know if you have any questions, but yeah. Thank you for watching. Uh, I guess I need to do the mandatory. If you like it, subscribe and, uh, give it a thumbs up on the video or something like that. Um, but yeah, either way, I uh, hope you enjoyed and I shall make another video hopefully sometime soon.